TalkLine Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. And now, you're listening to TalkLine with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. Here is your host. And we're back. And we have the one and only Curtis Lee, where you know him. He's the guardian angel. He is a talk radio host. And now... He'd like to be mayor of New York City. He's running on the Republican line in the Republican primary. So, Curtis Lewa, thank you for joining us. You just turned on your microphone, and uh, we are good. glad to have you back. How's it going, Curtis? Oh, my pleasure, uh, Seb. I was waiting for your invitation. Uh, figure you went through the whole laundry list of Democrats before you got to me. Well, listen, we have so many, We have a million of Democrats. I think we only have a couple of Republicans running, but I'm glad that you're joining us in New York. I know everybody's saying defund the police, and you're saying refund the police, right? Not only am I saying refund the police, Zeb, I'm also talking about hiring more police so that we can get up to a level of 38,000 police officers that Rudy Giuliani had when he became mayor back in 1993, and he was able to turn things around in terms of making the street safe, making the subway safe. We have to do exactly the same thing again. And most importantly, Zeb, we have to have a mayor like myself who's going to visit every precinct, starting out in Staten Island and working my way through Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Manhattan, shaking the hand of every man and woman who serves as a police officer, encouraging them, pumping them up, building up their morale, letting them know Go out, do your job as you were trained. I got your back. Now, if you cross the line and you violate people's rights, I'll be your worst nightmare. But the mayor now, Bill de Blasio, is certainly not doing that. And uh, all the Democrats suggest defunding, uh, reallocating money, but certainly not shoring up the police, building up their morale, and most importantly, hiring more police. And I have the plan to do it, Sev. If anyone's interested, just go to Curtis Sliwa. For mayor.com. That's Curtis Sliwa for mayor.com. And you could see how I'm going to do it. I'm going to tax Madison Square Garden property tax, Columbia University, NYU, Rockefeller, Cornell Medical. They sit on millions of dollars in endowments, or they're just making a lot of money, but not paying any property taxes. And that will be a special tax directed at reinforcing the police department and refunding the police department because without public safety, we cannot recover here in New York City and get everything back on track. But, but, but here's a question, Curtis, because you're saying refund every single Democratic candidate is pretty much basically saying defund the police. New York is such a liberal, progressive city that, you know, you mentioned Donald Trump and I guess people's hair stands on end. You mentioned Republican. It's like you mentioned the devil here in New York City. So how is it possible? And I, and I know that, you know, you're running on, on helping the police and bringing law and order. But at the same time, we're so progressive here that you, if you say Republican, then you got a demerit against you from the get-go. Well, Zeb, you're right. There's an eight-to-one ratio of Democrats who are registered versus Republicans. But there are a growing number of independents. And remember, most Democrats are not like AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or as I call it, all-out crazy, like the Democrat Socialists of America. Most are moderate Democrats. And they have seen their property values dropping. They are beginning to flee themselves, heading to Florida or Tennessee or Texas or South Carolina, North Carolina or Georgia. So it's not just Republicans who are fleeing. It's moderate Democrats. And in order to stem the tide, I think even the modern Democrats understand you must have safe streets. You must have safe subways. But you have to do it in a compassionate way because many of the people who are causing the problems are either emotionally disturbed, as we see time and time again, or homeless. The emotionally disturbed need to be taken to mental health hospitals and given their medication and given an opportunity to get back on track themselves in terms of their mental health. The homeless people, we shouldn't just be giving them shelter. We have to get them off their drug addiction, their alcohol addiction. We have to resolve their emotional problems so that they too can become protective citizens again. The only thing that that part-time mayor, that dope from Park Slope, Bill de Blasio, is doing is warehousing homeless people now in almost every neighborhood in the five boroughs of the city of New York. And that's going to stop when I become mayor. 
Well, listen, it takes a lot of money and you have <laughs> progressive talent, so it's a big challenge. So what is your strategy? First of all, you need lots of moolah. You need a lot of guilt to run for mayor, right? So how is that coming along? Well, I was the last candidate to get involved in the race. It's only been a little more than 30 days since I filed. And so I'm way behind when it comes to raising the guilt. So if there are people out there who want to help Curtis Lee will compete, because remember, I have to reach a certain threshold even to be able to debate my Democratic adversary, whoever he or she is who survives their primary process on June 22nd, as I have to survive the Republican process. So again, if people want to help, you go on board at CurtisLewaForMayor.com. There are so many ways you can donate. If you if you live in the city of New York, guess what, Zeb? If you were not throwing nickels around like manhole covers, and let's say Zeb Brenner decided, hey, I'm going to give you $10, Curtis, for your campaign. Your $10 gets times by eight. That becomes $90 that I get to campaign with due to the progressive liberal values of new york city now i have to take advantage of that in order to play catch up that's the matching fund but you also have to go through a primary you have one opponent in a primary you have to go through that and then on to the general election so it's a process and with covid around it's much more it's much harder to campaign so how is that coming along because you can't there aren't as many events dinners social get-togethers that one would normally have during a campaign year Zeb Brenner, I'm not up in the suites. As your listeners know, I'm down in the streets. I'm in the subways. And people have to go outside. They got to take care of the basics from time to time. And that's where I come into contact with. So for many of your listeners, they've seen me in Crown Heights. They've seen me in Borough Park. They've seen me in Williamsburg. They've seen me in Regal Park. I'm not a fair weather friend. I was just out in Far Rockaway the other day, right near Five Towns, near Bayswater. I am everywhere, as you know, whether pandemic or no pandemic, nobody locks down Curtis Slewa. I'm like, bing, 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 bing. I'm like the Energizer Bunny. So I'm out there, I'm being visible, and I'm promoting public safety and law and order. And I'm the only candidate doing that. And so if people want to turn the streets and the subways over to the criminals, hey, they can back my adversaries because every one of their programs is making it easier for thugs to commit crime. And with a no bail system, commit the most heinous crime. They're out of jail with a disappearance ticket. That's like the kind of ticket you get for a traffic violation or a parking violation. These thugs need in jail, no bail. And Curtis Lee, as mayor, is going to put the pressure on whoever remains governor, because I don't know if Andrew Evil Ice Cuomo is going to remain governor, but whoever is the governor, whoever is leading the state senate or the state assembly will have to answer to me as mayor because I am going to be relentless as a critic of theirs. And every time a crime is committed by somebody who is released without bail, Curtis Lee was going to be their nightmare there. I'm going to be pointing out these indiscretions morning, noon, and night. And wherever the mayor goes, the press will follow. Now, you had a bully pulpit pul pul when you were on WABC Radio, I think because of the election laws, you had to stop your program. So that, I think, uh, it made it more it's making it more difficult for you to get your message out there. Of course. And unfortunately, there's a double standard. You could be Eric Adams, right? You're the Brooklyn Borough President. What do you do all day? You cut ribbons, right? And you get paid for that. Well, now you get paid by the taxpayers to run for mayor, too just like Scott Stringer, the city controller. How is it they can continue to work their job where they're supposed to be working for the interests of their constituents and spend morning, noon, and night campaigning on that taxpayer's time? So I've been forced to leave my job. I no longer have that bully pulpit at WABC. Thank God, Zeb Brenner, you're giving me, me a chance to speak to my many listeners over the years on talk line communication and also WOR. But I got to find every way imaginable to get my message out there because the elected officials who seem to run perpetually for office, they have a distinct advantage to every, anyone who is trying to campaign from the outside looking in. We're going to occur to sleep where we're. We'll open up our phone lines at 212 769 1925. 
Extension 100, 212, 769, 1925. Extension 100, if you want to speak to Curtis Sue, you want to email us. It's a great way to have some of your questions answered. Zevbrenner at gmail.com. Zevbrenner at gmail.com. So let's look at what's happening with the Jewish community in New York. I go to the Hasidic community. You've been there in Borough Park. You've been there in Crown Heights. You've been there in Far Rockway and other areas. And you see, they, they feel that the elected officials... I've become insensitive uh, to the needs of the Jewish community. Some of the language, including the way the governor said about going to a sukkah, and you have some of the language dealing with wearing masks and how they've been picked upon. So there's a feeling of abandonment by some of the elected officials. And they should feel abandoned, particularly the ultra-Orthodox. How often have they come together and voted in unity for these candidates? For Andrew Cuomo. For Bill de Blasio, I know their leaders, the rabbis, have gathered their constituents and said, we should support de Blasio, we should support Cuomo because they're going to take care of us. Well, now maybe you recognize they are fair-weathered friends. Whereas when you look at the panoply of all the different candidates, who has been with the Orthodox community, the Hasidim, every time you've had a problem? In Crown Heights in 1991, when everyone abandoned the Lubavitchers, I and the guardian angels were there, 30 days, 30 straight nights, right from the corner of President and King Kingsbridge, just blocks away from 770 Eastern Parkway. Two Hanukkahs ago, you remember all the attacks on the ultra-Orthodox? The guardian angels and I, we were in Williamsburg, we were in Borough Park, we were in Rigo Park, we were in Crown Heights. You can't say that about any of these other candidates because they were ducking for cover. They didn't want to deal with the big problem of anti-Semitism. Look at what the Asian community is going through now, what the Jewish community has gone through for years. They are being targeted because they are excelling in school. They're excelling in business. And immediately because they are playing by the rules and they are educating their children. They are under constant attack now. And what are the elected officials doing other than having rallies and giving speeches? Meantime, the guardian angels have been out in the Asian communities for the past year before the lockdown in Chinatown, in Flushing, on 8th Avenue and Sunset Park, because that's what I have typically done for 42 years, regardless of one's religion or ethnic group or race. When people are in need, the guardian angels were always there, and that was the mandate from Curtis Sliwa. Now, you mentioned about education. What's your position about as far as with some of the ultra-Orthodox yeshivas about making it mandatory more secular subjects? What is your position on that? Well, clearly, I, I went to parochial schools. I went to Catholic schools half my life. And I remember in elementary school, they had the state inspector and the city inspector at, time, at that time. It was the Board of Education in New York City. It's now the Department of Education and the state board. And we were being taught evolution. I think everybody recognizes the Roman Catholic Church does not believe in evolution, but some of that had to be taught. I've been in yeshivas where secular education has been taught, in addition to a lot of religious education. There has to be a balance. You can't say we want funding, but we're not going to permit any secular education whatsoever. They have to do it in all different kinds of religious schools, and some of the ultra-Orthodox schools are going to have to accept that. Or... They may have to revert to homeschooling. They may have to revert to other measures and not necessarily seek funding from the state government or the city government. No, but, they, but all of them have secular education. It's not like they're not doing any secular education. The question is, is how much can the state mandate what they teach uh, in the schools? And every school has different levels of what they're educating their students. So they're, they are doing it. The question is, is, is how much, and, and again, it's a question of government interference in, in, in religious schools. That's really the bottom line question. Well, I'm also a believer in vouchers and tuition tax credits so that more families can take advantage of choice in terms of education, especially if you look during this pandemic. The only schools that have been open to in-school training have been the parochial schools, have been the religious schools. So they have to be rewarded for that. But in terms of secular education, because I don't want to dodge that question, Zeb. You know, you were going to let me dodge that question, right? No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not someone running for office who dodges a question. I think you may have to sit down yeshiva by yeshiva, school by school, to determine 
what's a fair balance. I can't say that I know what every yeshiva does or every Catholic school or every mosque or every religious institution like Lutheran schools and other schools in our city. So I would have to actually really dissect and bisect that. Let's go to Stan in Forest Hills. Go ahead, Stan. Your question for Curtis Lewa. Yes, good evening. Curtis, let me ask you a question. If you have the guardian angels, which is technically, I don't want to use the word vigilante group, but it's in, in that genre. If you become mayor, you may have to distance yourself from this type of a group. And would you be able to do that? Obviously, you support the police. Could you next technically say they cannot do anything while you are mayor and so forth? Because there would be a conflict of interest and Technically, maybe the police would not be thrilled with that. How would you deal with a situation like that? Well, right now, the police uh, work very cooperatively with the Guardian Angels, not just here in New York City. We're in 13 countries and 130 cities now, and we don't have really problems anywhere with the police. Obviously, if I become mayor of the city of New York, some other man or woman within the ranks of the Guardian Angels are going to have to run the day-to-day -day operations. The heavy lifting required to save our city, to get us back on track, to resurrect us from where Bill de Blasio has single-handedly put us. Uh, he's taken a wrecking ball to the city that we love. But no, we're not vigilantes. We're not judge, jury, and executioner. If anything, we're actually able now, unfortunately, as many police officers have told me, to do more than even the police can do because of all the restrictions that have been put on them by this mayor and the city council. And I will be attacking each and every city council person who says defund the police. I'm going to say to them, oh, really, Jumani Williams, public advocate? Uh, well, no longer are you going to have the NYPD armed services at your beck and call. This guy lives on the U.S. military base at Fort Hamilton, the active army base. What chutzpah does he have to suggest that you defund the police? Meantime, he has 24-hour security by the NYPD. And he lives, lives behind the actual walls of a military base in Brooklyn. I'll call out all these fake, phony, fraudulent, fugazi politicians. And guess what? I'm not traveling with NYPD security. The day I need the cops to protect Curtis Lewa is the day I need to retire to the sixth borough of the city of New York, Boca Raton in Florida. Let me ask you this question. Who do you have at this moment? Obviously, you've just started. What endorsements do you have? Can you tell us? Anybody at the moment on the Republican, in the Republican world uh, that's supporting you for mayor? Oh, yes. Well, first off, the Staten Island GOP, which is the strongest Republican organization of the five boroughs, the Brooklyn GOP, brand new Congresswoman Nicole Molly Atakis, all the elected officials on Staten Island, also George Pataki, the former Republican governor, have publicly come out and endorsed me. And there are other endorsements that are in the pipeline that will take place before the Republican primary on June 22nd. So I'm doing relatively well when it comes to support from the Republicans. And there are no two stronger GOP groups in all of New York City than in Staten Island and Brooklyn. How about, uh, have you sought Mr. Trump's endorsement, Donald Trump? No, no. Uh, I think the president, the former president, he's down in Mar-a-Lago. Uh, he's uh, plotting out his own return to the presidency. I think I'm trying to keep everything local. Because, quite frankly, whether Trump remained president or with Joe Biden our president now, they can't help New York. We have to help ourselves. We really have to pick ourselves up by the bootstraps. We have to learn to do more with us. Everyone thinks there's money out there. Andrew Yang, oh, I'm going to give $1,000 to everybody each month. Hey, where's the gelt? Where are you going to find this? We don't have printing presses like in Washington to print money, to raise the debt, to raise the deficit. We have to have a balanced budget. We have to learn, like every household does, like every business does, to do more with less. And that's not going to come from politicians. That has to come from the mayor giving the directive that we have to be accountable for every nickel, dime, and penny we spend of the taxpayers' money. We're already trying to drive out the rich. Anyway, that's what anyway thank you for your phone. We have other calls coming in. So let's go to Jules in Brooklyn. Jules in Brooklyn, your question for our guests. Go ahead, Jules. Yes, first I will state I will crawl over glass to vote for, for Curtis Lee. That's how much I like him. That's number one. Number two, Curtis, what's your message 
to counteract progressives like AOC that loses jobs in the city. I mean, you have to make your campaign against progressives that are taking over the city. Well, my campaign is about capitalism. As you know, there's supply and demand. So you see AOC all out crazy and her Democrat Socialists of America, they're urging everyone, whether they are renting or leasing commercial property or residential property, not to pay rent. How crazy is that? Not to pay rent. We went through that in the 70s and 80s. We saw abandoned buildings. We saw arson. We saw everyone's property values drop like a rock. What I want to see in New York City in order to help everyone get back on track is cap property tax at 2% right across the board. If you happen to be 65 or older, you're a senior citizen, only earning $75,000 a year or less, you pay no property tax. I have a program to get everyone involved in their business if they would like to, because we have all this empty commercial space, so many businesses that have had to fold or leave or move to different locations. I want to be able to assist men and women who believe in capitalism, who want to who want to earn the American dream by getting involved in either retail or hotel wholesale business. And that's what the city of New York should become, a vehicle for people to live the American dream and stay in New York and not flee like so many of our brothers and sisters have done so far. Curtis, how can I work for your organization? I have a background in taxes. I'm an ex-federal agent, and I'd love to help out with your policies. I believe in everything you say. But what you got to do, and anyone listening out there, is go online now to Curtis Sliwa formayor.com, CurtisSlewa, formayor.com. You'll see my positions on the issues. You'll see where you can volunteer for the campaign. And most importantly, you'll see where you can give some guilt, some some moolah moolah, some shekels, so I can compete against all these Democrats who want to destroy this city as Bill de Blasio has already done. Best of luck, Curtis. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you for your phone call. We appreciate it. We're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, some more of your phone calls. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. You're listening to the TalkLine Network. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Talk line radio and TV with Zeb Brenner is just phenomenal. Everybody concerned about the Jewish community should listen and watch. He has the best guests. He asks the most interesting questions. He's always so well prepared. It's talk radio and television from a Jewish point of view at its very best. To advertise on the Talkline network and Talkline's email and social media blasts reaching over 70,000 people, please call 212-769-1925, extension 100. That's 212-769-1925, extension 100. Or email info at talklinenetwork.com. You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now your host. We're back, and we just want to tell you that we have Curtis Lewis just for a little while longer. Huda in Flatbush, your question for the one and only. Curtis, what's your Hebrew name? we got to get you a Hebrew name on the campaign. What should your Hebrew name be? Ah, boy, you're gonna have to give me one. Uh, how about, we're gonna call you Chaim. Okay. Chaim. 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 Not 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 Yitzhak. Not Yitzhak. No, you're gonna say you have to have the Ch. The Chaim. Oh. Like Hanukkah. I thought it, maybe I could be Shlomo. How about Shlomo? Shlomo. Okay, Shlomo shall be. Okay. Okay. Go, Yehuda, <laughs> and, Yehuda and Flappers, your question or comment to Curtis Lewa. Go ahead. Yes, hi. I would like to know, what are the chances you really have to win them? I mean, I'm a big fan of yours, and so is the whole Baropak of Flatbush. But in this day and age, with so many crazy progressives out there, what are the chances you could win? And the second question is, we, we need you back on the radio. Are you going to get your slot back on ABC? Well, A number one, I intend on getting my spot back at WABC when I become mayor. And remember, when Rudy got elected mayor, he did ask the mayor on Friday mornings. So, yeah, that's when I'll return to WABC. But to the bigger question of how could I possibly win against this tsunami, this avalanche of progressives and Democrats? Well, think back. When a guy named George Pataki, who's supporting me in this election, was running against Mario Facha Bruta Cuomo, no one thought that George Pataki could beat Mario Cuomo. He was the iconic figure in the Democratic Party. 
very li liberal, very progressive. And out of nowhere, a man that nobody knew from Peach Skill, New York, beat a man who could have become president of the United States or a U.S. Supreme Court judge, Mario Cuomo. So never rule out the possibility. Rudy Giuliani beat Dinkins. Bloomberg got elected for three terms. We had 20 years of Republican mayors, and we didn't have the kind of problems we're having now. Hopefully, people will remember the better times and understand who was there in charge, a Republican mayor and a Republican governor. We have a lot of people waiting to speak to Kurt. Let's try to be as brief and succinct and to the point. Let's go to Williamsburg, and I believe we have Terrence in Williamsburg. Go ahead. Your question for Curtis. Um, I have a few. I want to know where he stands on mandatory vaccinations in the workplace, in the city, and um, where he stands on um, the health passport situation. I'm not in, in favor of this uh, vaccine passport that they want or mandatory vaccinations. More than enough people will choose to be vaccinated. We will achieve herd immunity without forcing everybody to have a vaccination or if they choose to work or travel to have a vaccine passport. No, I'm opposed to that. That answer your question. job market? Excuse me? What about the job market? About having vaccine in order to get, get to work is what he's asking. Yeah, no, no. If uh, It should not be a requirement that you be vaccinated in order to go to work uh, or take an airplane or in any way, shape or form, uh, get involved in commerce or uh, retail or wholesale or an office job or whatever it is that you earn your, your, your living from. Okay, I think that should answer your question, but thank you for that. We're going to squeeze in the one or two more phone calls. Okay, let's go to Yaakov in Williamsburg. There's a lot of listeners in Williamsburg calling in tonight. Go ahead, Yaakov in Williamsburg, your question. Yes, go ahead. Do you have your question to Curtis is? Go ahead, Yaakov. I guess we lost him. We'll, we'll call you back. Let's go to Georgia, Manhattan. Georgia, Manhattan, your question for Curtis. Go ahead. Yes, Curtis, one ma ma minor correction. The only reason Giuliani won the second time was because blacks didn't show up to vote. Now, my question to you, your fame comes from being a, a political bomb thrower. Aren't you afraid that your effectiveness will decline once you have been included in the system? Well, that's always a danger. That's a very good point. You know, you be you begin to assimilate. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, the fiery rhetoric, rhetoric may not be as fiery as it was before in the streets or when I'm behind the microphone. Uh, I have to be open-minded to every point of view. I have to be able to sit down with people that I may disagree with. So, yeah, I may have to check some of my rhetoric at the door. Maybe I, I won't call Andrew Evilized Cuomo Evilized anymore. Maybe I won't call Bill de Blasio that dope from Park Slope. That I will continue to call him because he needs to go back to Boston. He should have stayed there and never come to New York City where he's been a play. You see, I can't control myself, Zeb. <laughs> you Listen, I'm glad, I'm glad it's good to hear you, hear you back on the radio again. So you, ah. the, the radio juices are flowing. They're coming out. They're, yes. they're broadcasting themselves. Let's go to Yaakov in Williamsburg. Your question for the one and only Curtis Slewa. Yaakov, are you there? For some reason. Yaakov's, I don't know what, what happened. Taking, he's taking the code of Omerta. <laughs> he, he must be afraid. I know. The he second, be two, 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 times, two times is a charm. But um, so how much money have you raised and how much money do you anticipate raising between now and the primary in June? Because you got to believe it, primary. believe it or not, Zeb. If I can raise two hundred and fifty thousand dollars from New York City residents by May seventeenth, you know how much money they give me to run against the Democrats to stop them from defunding the police and defunding prisons. The city of New York, the taxpayers are forced to give me two million dollars to run my campaign, which means I can compete against any Democrat who survives, whether it's Yang, Eric Adams, Scott Stringer, Maya, whoever it is that survives their process. And I'll at least have an opportunity to compete. If I don't raise the money, guess what? They may not let me get on a debate stage and debate them. Now, can you imagine that, Zev? If you were a Democrat, would you want to be on a debate stage with Curtis Sliwa? Oh, of course you don't. Well, listen, it's, it's going to be this is entertainment. Unfortunately, the stakes are very high. That's the real problem here. 
The stakes are extremely high. Uh, this, and, and, and I'm just concerned that not that many people are going to come out to vote. And if not that many people come, come out to vote in a primary election, it's a problem. Right, Curtis? Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to be out there in the subways and the streets. I'm going to be rallying people. Expect to see me in Crown Heights and Borough Park and Williamsburg and Regal Park like I've always been. Except now, I'm going to be telling people, hey, do you expect me to get a double hernia and carry you to the polling location? A vote by mail-in ballot with an absentee ballot. There's early voting for 10 days. There's the day itself on June 22nd. There's no excuses. I never asked a favor of the Jewish community, Zeb, in all these years. I'm asking a favor now that you put aside whatever it is you have to do. And if you happen to be a registered Republican on June 22nd, you make sure you you put that scanning device in for Curtis Sliwa. And don't tell me you don't know how to spell my last name. That Shiva, that means plum. You know who Curtis Sliwa is. Curtis, I I, 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 I want to squeeze in Yakov three times a charm. I think we finally got Yakov switch phones. Yakov, are you there from Williamsburg? Yeah, yes. Hello, Cur Curtis. Um, this situation in New York with the Sullivan Law is an anomaly in the whole United States. And they say that an armed society is a polite society. And it's nice that we rely on you and the police, but people are afraid to go anywhere now. We must remove the Sullivan Law. Can you deal with that? Well, that's on a state level. Uh, a mayor has no control over that. I certainly know many men and women who do have carry permits. It's uh, extremely difficult to get. I believe if you have been a victim of crime, if you're running a business, you need a carry permit. Look, when I was shot five times on the orders of John Gotti Sr. to the Gambino crime family, I was offered a carry permit by the NYPD because they said, we can't protect you. They're going to try to kill you, Curtis. The fact is I chose not to have a carry permit because guardian angels don't carry weapons. I didn't want to set a bad example for the rest Good of impressive. the young. We're, we're out of time. Yako from Wednesday, thank you. SD writes uh, from Brooklyn, I actually think Curtis is the best candidate and should do more public relations in our community. Okay, that's why he's on the show tonight. Right, Curtis? Absolutely. That's why you all go to CurtisLewaForMayor.com and you show your support. That's CurtisLewaForMayor.com. I never let down the Jewish community. I hope all of you are going to give me good knockers. So right, I can we got to get now. We're, we're going to get you back. We're going to have to every turn repeat. Curtis Lee, thank you for being here with us. We enjoyed it. Thank you. I'll be back, Seb. Don't we're, act we're going like to have you back. We're going to have you back. Absolutely, absolutely. But thank you, and uh, we appreciate you being on. If you miss any of our shows? Go to JewishPodcast.org, and you can catch at JewishPodcast.org. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. Hi, this is David Gabe, and you're listening to the Zev Brenner Show. This concludes TalkLine's Jewish broadcasts on radio for tonight. For continuous Jewish programs, please go now to TalkLineNetwork.com or our 24-hour-a-day listen line at 641-741-0389. For past shows, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, Instagram, and all major podcast platforms or JewishPodcast.org. Thanks for listening to the TalkLineNetwork.com.